Hi everyone and welcome back to the painting channel. Today it's going to be a watercolour and it's going to be a bit of a moody sky uh, but with a lot of light in the sky I hope and a very simple landscape to go underneath it. So without further ado let's jump right in and see what happens. Okay everyone and uh, the drawing is a very very simple one. It's merely a little bit of foreground, a couple of lovely tree elements, that one on the right hand side being the largest form and then some clouds in the background. Now all of this is not going to be in great detail but it will serve to add impact to the sky and that's what I want it for. Now the uh, initial wash in this area of light is Oriolin and it's going to dry out very very pale but it really excites the eye when it comes to light or white color. Now I'm using some indigos and some magenta just to give me a dirty mix of greys and darks a little bit more uh, of the indigo going into that and just putting around for that top part of the cloud it encases the uh, sky it encases the light of the sun and it's moving across and breaking up as it goes so it's going to be a big heavy rain cloud that's moving across but breaking up as it goes. I'm putting a lot more blue into the mix as I go underneath and again it's more of the same cloud but it's adding the other side and encases the light and that's what will create the I suppose the sunburst in a sense. I use a bit of cerulean to create some sky on the far left and that I felt was needed. It gives another element of color to what would be a very boring sky if it was all just the greys and the uh, warmth in there. So I used the blue to come down and I wanted it to blend nicely in with the lower part of the sky. I added a little bit of the blue also into the top part of that lower cloud and as it gets towards the sun it pales off and becomes uh, less impactive. So what I'm doing is I'm actually using a lot more water uh, in my mixes and I'm feathering off some of the hard edges I first left. Now I'm using a heavyweight paper as I usually do. This is a uh, 300 pound paper and it is a, a hot press paper so it can put up with quite a bit of uh, punishment but it also stays damper for a lot lot longer. And I'm putting these directional lines in. I actually got them a little bit wrong at this point, but I then corrected those to make them look right. They have to radiate out from the certain point of where I really want the sun. So I had to disguise those center ones just a tad. But by the end of the painting, it was sorted. I didn't have a problem with it. And what I'm doing now is reinforcing some of the negative spaces between those radiated lights. Uh, just to make them stand out a little bit more. But all I did was use the damp brush and eased off the colour with good clean water or dampness within the brush itself. I'm adding in a few more layers of the same violet and the same blue violet. Certainly down below there's a lot more uh, cerulean in that mix. And then I'm gone up to the top of the cloud to reinforce the weight of that cloud and that's going to really excite the light. Once more, this painting is all about the um, differences between contrast. You know, the heavy contrast and the light and the dark. And that is what really punches out the sun. At the end of the day, it's just white paper, a bit of yellow and a bit of dark grey paint. But put them in the right ratios, put those tones correct and it will make that light really buzz and uh, authenticate the look of a sunburst. And, and this whole idea of um, contrast really goes across almost so many paintings. I did jump here a little bit. I'm sorry I did lose a little bit of footage at this point uh, in the proceedings. So you see me sort of rejoining it where I've already started the hills. Now I used a bit of indigo again, a bit of lemon or oreolin, and I tweaked between the two to make a cooler mix. Also I used some indigo in there as well, but it made a much cooler mix, and also the lemon made a much lighter mix. That's where the light is punching through on the side of the hill. 
in the far distance and then the darker blues in the hills much further away i also put a little bit of translucent orange in that middle ground to suggest the light of a field and now i'm putting in the darker elements of the hills now these are just darker values with less paint in than those i've already been using but because they're a little bit stronger in pigment they will show up as, as the darker parts of the hills and i'm not painting the whole of the hill i'm tapping away i'm leaving little little areas of the hill that suggest that these are wooded and they're heavily wooded and there are some of those areas where there is less wood and it's all popping through so you can see that it does look like a multiple um, foliage uh, hill to want of a better description and a little bit of detail going into the lighter colors and i'm using a little bit of green and a little bit of oriolin just at a slightly stronger strength once more to put in some variation into the side of the hill and ending up on that side on the right with a bit more blue into the mix just to uh, sort of have some relationship to the colors on the far left and I actually put in a little bit of cerulean to this mix as well just to break up and suggest that some of these trees are a little denser a little darker in one or two places I had a lot of fun with this because the whole thing is you're putting your wicks, you're trying to make it look like little variations, little bits of tree foliage here. Well, not tr if you stood there, there would be massive trees, but uh, of course they're not from this distance. But what you do notice that I used negative space to leave an outline of lemon on trees that are on the bottom of the hills. And what I then did is I went in with a big strong mix of green and uh, some uh, indigo just to suggest the first wash on the big trees and the denser line of trees that run along the bottom of the hills or the top of the field. And what I did is I used that lemon yellow or that oriolin to suggest the rim lighting on some of the trees. So I put darker accents to one side and then I looked where the light was coming and I added the highlights or left the highlights, should I say, on the edges so you get that strong rim lighting around those tree forms uh, in that middle distance now I've come in with the various amounts of uh, greens and here I'm using cobalt so I'm using uh, oriolin some uh, Indian yellow and a little bit of the um, thylacining green just to mix it up a little bit and put my first wash of greens but I'm also softening off the mixes damp water less pigment just take off the hard edges so you get an overall feeling of a much darker field complex in the foreground now i'm using some more blues and some more indigo into that and by doing that i'm adding some foreground detail i'm not being specific i'm really using the same tapping motion that i did in the hills uh, way off but it works it it suggests to you that there is a, uh, a lovely element of uh, foreground information that is happening uh, in the fields right in front of you. And it also adds to accentuate the light that runs through that middle ground just above the brush there. And also you can see those darker taps of the trees really punch out the light on the side of the hill and also that of the sky and that's what the whole of this was about was the as i've said earlier all about the contrast it's all about the light and dark now i'm going to go in with a much darker mix the same mix as i was using elsewhere to give a double whammy to this big structural tree and i'm using a small rigger or liner brush just to tease out edges to break up the edge of the tree to make it look as though there's a bit more going on with it and its shape and form before we wind up and we are pretty much finished this is just the um, end you know I'm just teasing this out and I'm pretty much done I've really enjoyed this little study and I hope you've enjoyed it too and um, and got something from it but uh, it's as I say it it not it's not a very difficult painting but it does need a little bit of thought as to placing the contrast and getting those tones about right. But I put in a little bit of light green in here just to give a little suggestion of light 
from that sunshine punching through the top end of that tree and it will then descend into the darker elements at the bottom and to the far right. I did a little bit to the one beside it and one or two of the other trees along that top edge. So there we are one landscape with I hope a little bit of an exciting sky and cloud uh, that was the idea behind it the foreground or the, the uh, landscape itself was merely a supporting act to the, the sky above I hope you got something from it I'm sure you have uh, if you've enjoyed this video then uh, that little thumb icon hit that like the video, share the video with friends. You must know other people that may not be watching it that might be interested in seeing it. Uh, so share it to them, share it to others. And at the same time, if you're not a subscriber, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. It really is uh, helpful to me to grow my channel. And uh, it also tells you when the next video is coming. I know I harp on about subscribing all the time, but I have noticed that there are an awful lot of subscribers out there, or sorry, there's an awful lot of people out there who are not subscribed. So fantastic. If you're watching it, you enjoy it, you want to see more of it, subscribe to the channel. That'd be fantastic and I appreciate it. And I thank you all. What else can I say? Not a lot more. <laughs> uh, yeah. Enjoy it and I'll see each and every one of you next Friday uh, with a new video and uh, I don't know what it's going to be yet but I am just enjoying it and I keep filming and I keep putting these out and yeah all the best for now for our ramble on. Take care everyone, happy painting, keep those paint brushes going, catch all very very soon. Bye bye for now, bye.